Howdy Kickstarter, Matt Chapman here with Excel Physics. Uh, I First off I want to say how awesome the Kickstarter is going um, and it's a smashing success thanks to you guys. Um, we're, we're able to do the kind of things we've always dreamed of now and we can provide some awesome products to you guys as a result. Um, thank you. Um, so what have we been working on, like you know, how are we getting this Kickstarter uh, towards the, the goal? Um, I uh, have been working a lot on the design. I, I keep pushing towards something that's easier to build, um, so that the kit is fun and uh, and a good learning experience. I was able to double the sensitivity while making it easier to uh, solder. I um, uh, got the data port, so uh, this cable is going to be with uh, essentially all the kits. Um, probably not with the advanced because you really don't need it because it has a built-in built microcontroller and Bluetooth. But uh, for all the other ones, you're going to have this. This lets you talk from the detector to an Arduino or to a computer. And I'm going to show you guys how that works now. So uh, I'm going to show everybody how to hook the APOC, um, the uh, basic assembled, uh, all of those, up to an Arduino. Um, this is an Arduino Uno. Most people have one of these. Um, you, you can use it in conjunction with a USB cable and just look at the data through serial. Or um, you can get one of these screens, um, very, very cool little screen. So uh, it acts as a shield, so you just hook the uh, two together. Um, I soldered on these pins so that I uh, could then attach the detectors. So then you're going to have this data cable that comes with, with all of the uh, detectors. Um, you're just going to have to connect one wire to ground. Um, and the other wire to pin three, and uh, pin two and pin three are interrupts. Um, that's really where the Arduino shines. So I figured it would be a great way to use it. So then you hook the other end of the cable, it's got three, three connectors, and then you hook that up to the detector. And you're gonna hook up a nine volt battery. I, I do have two nine volt batteries, um, since I didn't make a splitter, so that's fine. I'll just do it that way. So hook up the nine volt there. Um, I've already flashed the Arduino and we're going to include all the software um, and it's fairly easy to use, lots of comments. Um, so you just hook that up to the uh, Arduino side, it boots up, it starts saying some cool stuff. And then once it boots up, then it'll start giving you counts per minute. The detector is not on, so of course it's saying zero. So um, three switch positions. Front is off, middle is um, on, and it acts just as a standalone detector. And I've uh, got my cool little cesium-137 source disk here. Um, then when the switch is all the way back, it acts as, it outputs the data onto the data uh, port. So then I put the cesium disk up, right up against the um, detector, and uh, once it's pooled, you see the count is just going crazy. It's going to say about 12,000 for this disk at, yeah, so very, very, very radioactive. Um, well, the most radioactive you can get without a license, but, um, so, yeah, nice little, uh, now it's treating it as a Geiger counter at this point. Um, so then, uh, Another thing that I wanted to show is the source disks. Um, they, this is a great way to confirm that you've um, put your kit together properly. And we're going to be selling these on our website. Um, it contains 0.1 grams of thorium. And uh, it puts out about 72 to 80 um, counts per minute. And so once the uh, detector fin figures uh, calibrating, it starts to give counts. Now it didn't have the full time to count, so it read, it read a little bit low, but you'll see that uh, after 10 seconds of detecting, yeah, we get pretty darn close to our expected value, which is really cool. So it's a, it's a very precise detector, and uh, these confirmation disks are wonderful. Yeah, so it tends to average around 72 to 80. Uh, so with the new improvements, uh, the sensitivity has been doubled. Um, now, using potassium chloride or sodium-free uh, salt, um, 
which you can buy at pretty much any grocery store, it's a, it's a fairly exciting demo. You can go to a grocery store and buy something that you eat that's radioactive, that's pretty exciting. Um, so uh, I just put it in the bag so that the salt doesn't get on the detector, and um, it usually reads between 6 and 12 counts per minute, um, and as high as, uh, we've seen as high as 36. So, uh, I've done a demonstration of hooking the detector up to the Arduino, and now I'm going to show uh, how you hook it up to the computer. So, you, um, you connect the uh, data cable, make sure that it's set in the data output position. Um, you hook the cable up to the included audio cable. Um, uh, there probably won't be three wires on it. Well, in fact, there, there won't be. Um, and uh, so you just plug that in. Uh, I'll make it so that you can only connect it in one way. Um, plug it into your mic port, um, and I'm going to use the same source disk, which produces around 72 to 80 counts per minute. Okay, so then we open up the software. The software is called PRA8. It's written by um, Marek Dulliser from the University of Sydney. Um, Alright, so uh, you're going to want to set the, um, in the data acquisition and analysis, you're going to want to set the shape tolerance method. And what it's doing is looking for a specific pulse shape. Um, it helps improve the data quality. And then we go to action, start data acquisition, and uh, it's going to start counting pulses. 